All right, in this video, we're going to focus mainly on uh, what's called the end behavior of rational functions. We've already looked at end behavior of polynomial functions. Uh, with rational functions, it's a little different. <clears throat> All right, so um, the end behavior of a rational function is defined to be, we're asking, what does the y value get close to as x goes to plus or minus infinity? And it turns out uh, you, don't, you don't always have a horizontal asymptote. You could have other types of asymptotes as well, but it, it will be asymptotic to something. It might not be a horizontal line, though. Here we go. It all depends, basically, on the relative size of the degree. So if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, it turns out you'll always have y equals zero. And that's not too hard to see because look, look at this example. Uh, I'll show you in more depth in just a second why that's true, but look, does it make sense? Because if x is getting to be like 100, you'd have 2 over 100 squared plus 1. Isn't that getting very close to zero? All right. Uh, what if they have the same degree? What if the numerator, again, we're talking about p of x being the polynomial in the numerator, q of x on the denominator. If they have the same degree, then it turns out, and we'll show this in just a minute, that there will also be a horizontal asymptote. But in this case, it will be y equal uh, the ratio of the leading coefficients. So in other words, uh, here's an example. Notice they both have degree 1. And as we'll see in a second, this the end behavior, as x gets close to plus, or minus infinity, uh, the y values are getting close to two-fifths. Third case is what if the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator? Let's suppose the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree, than the degree of the denominator. So here's an example. The top has degree 2, the bottom has degree 1. It turns out the end behavior, the, the y values are not getting close to a horizontal line. They're going to get close to a linear function. That's interesting. We have all, for some reason, we have to have lots of names for this. Instead of just calling it a linear asymptote, it's sometimes referred to as a slant asymptote or an oblique asymptote. Anyway, the, the way you find the equation of that is to use long division. We'll see an example. Uh, what if the degree of the numerator is two more than the degree of the denominator? Suppose, for example, this example, the top has degree three, the bottom has degree one. It turns out, uh, this rational function is going to be asymptotic to a quadratic function. Uh, we call it a quadratic asymptote. And you see the pattern here? If this were, if the numerator were three bigger than the denominator, guess what the uh, end behavior would be? It, it, would, it would be a cubic asymptote. Anyway, we'll talk about that, but, that, but that's what's going on. Okay, so let's look at some specific examples. Okay, top has degree one, bottom has degree two. What we just said is going to have y equals zero. It's going to be a horizontal asymptote. Here's why, by the way. If you divide the numerator and denominator by x squared, look what you get here. You get a divide the top by x squared and the bottom by x squared. So you do this. Now what you do is divide each one by x squared. Now 3x over x squared is just 3 over x, right? This becomes plus 6 over x squared. And this becomes 1 minus 5 over x minus 6 over x squared. Okay, so if you have n behavior, you're asking what happens as x goes to positive or negative infinity. Well, let's look at positive infinity first. As x gets to be a big positive number, would you agree this is getting close to zero? 3 over 100, 3 over 1,000, this is getting close to zero. So is this, by the way. In fact, everything is getting close to zero. This is getting close to zero, this is getting close to zero. You just have one on the bottom. So as x goes to infinity, the function is getting close to zero over one, which is zero. That's why. Similarly, when x goes to negative infinity, you have the exact same situation. 3 over negative uh, 3 over negative 100 is still getting close to 0, right? Anyway, these are all getting close to 0 as x goes to the left. So that, that's why the horizontal asymptote is 0. So we're focusing on the end behavior now. Let's, we'll come back to, and put, talk about the vertical asymptotes again in just a minute, but we're just looking at the end behavior. As x goes to positive infinity, the, the y values are getting close to 0. x goes to negative infinity, the y values are getting close to 0. reason is because the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Okay, second example. Let's suppose they have the same degree. We just said that oh, the, there should be a horizontal asymptote at, at negative three-fifths, right? Three over negative five becomes negative three-fifths. Again, let's, let's do the same thing. Let's divide top and bottom here, and then this time, though, by x. If you divide top and bottom by x, uh, we're dividing three x plus seven by x and four minus five x by x. You get this. Now, we write it as three x over x, which is just three, plus seven over x. The bottom becomes four over x minus five x over x, which is just five. Can you see what happens? As x goes to positive infinity, again, this, this case here, 
plug in a number like a thousand. Seven over a thousand is getting close to zero, isn't it? So as x gets big positive, this term stays three, this term goes to zero, this term also goes to zero, but this term stays negative five, so what do you get? It's getting close to negative three-fifths. The same is true as x goes to negative infinity, by the way. So anyway, uh, the graph looks kind of like this. You're going to have a horizontal asymptote at a negative three-fifths. Okay, here the top has to agree one more than the bottom. So what I said was, uh, you're going to have what's called a linear asymptote. And the way you find the linear asymptote is use long division. Here you could not use synthetic division, could you? Because this is a quad quadratic divisor. Anyway, when you use long division, you actually get, get this. You can show that the function is equal to 2x minus 1 plus negative 2x plus 6 over x squared plus 1. So again, we're looking at n behavior. So what happens as x goes to plus or minus infinity? Well, look at what happens here. What happens to this term right here? This term right here, since the bottom has a bigger degree than the top, wouldn't you say this whole term gets close to zero as x gets close to positive infinity? So what's happening is the quotient uh, is, 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 is what the asymptote is. It's getting closer and closer to that. And so this is what the picture lo lo looks like. The picture lo looks like this, kind of, a, kind of a nice function, isn't it? Um, it's got a linear asym asymptote, y equals 2x minus 1, which again, it's the quotient when you use long division. And so we, we, we call this the linear asymptote, uh, or slant asymptote. All right, let's do two more here. This one, the top has degree 3, the bottom has degree 1. The, uh, so what I said before was you're going to have an asymptote. It's not going to be linear. In fact, it's going to be quadratic. How do you find the equation of the quadratic asymptote? You use long division again. You divide by x minus 2. I guess here you could use um, synthetic division, couldn't you? Um, anyway, it doesn't go in evenly. Uh, the, the remainder is 5, so when you use long division, you get this. But my question is, what happens as x goes to plus or minus infinity? Doesn't this term go to 0? If you plug in a big positive number, a big negative number, that this term goes to 0. So guess what the, whole, guess what the end behavior is going to be? It's going to be this function right here. So if you, if you were to graph this uh, um, rational function, you can, you can kind of see that, that function, can't you? x squared plus 1, the graph is getting cl close, to, um, cl close to the function y equals x squared plus 1. But try this one on your own. See if you can, see if you can um, determine the, the, the end behavior of this one. Go ahead, hit the pause button. Top has degree 2, bottom has degree 1. So it's going to be a linear uh, asymptote, right? Not, not horizontal, it's going to be linear asymptote. How do you find it? Use long division. And the function can be written like this, if you use long division. So the quotient will be the linear asymptote. This remainder over the divisor, this goes to zero as x goes to infinity, because we're just looking at n be in behavior, right? This term goes to zero. So there you go, you should have gotten a slant asymptote of x minus 6. Put it all together, okay? Alright, so this is a rational function. The x-intercepts is when the numerator is 0, as long as the denominator is not 0 there. So you have an x-intercept at, at, at 0. Notice it has multiplicity 2, though, right? That means it's going to turn there. Y-intercept, if you plug in 0 for x, I think you get uh, f of 0, 0. That's right, f of 0, 0. That's the only uh, that's the only, that's the y-intercept. Now, are there any vertical asymptotes? Well, yeah, if you set the bottom equal to 0, you don't have to worry about holes here because there, there's no factors in common. So you're going to have... Uh, um, two vertical asymptotes. Each has multiplicity one, which means what? It means the graph is going to go on different, 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 different sides of two and negative two. The graph goes to positive and negative infinity. And behavior? Well, if you look at the leading coefficients, the leading coefficient is one. Uh, the ratio, I should say, is one over one. So y equals one is going to be the horizontal asymptote. You also notice that it's an even function. So, so. Um, so, so uh, what that means is whatever it does on one side of the x-axis, see it's an even function, it does the same thing on the other. So go ahead, hit the pause button, see if you can, see if you can sketch the graph here. If you plot the point 1, negative 3, it looks kind of, 1, negative, oh, I should say 1, negative 1, third, looks kind of like this. And, and so it would be like this on the other side. It looks like the graph would have to go down here. And the reason is because if it, if it were to go up, it wouldn't have to have another x-intercept. But you just showed there's only one x-intercept, see? Anyway, so it's even, so it looks like this. And since the vertical asymptotes have multiplicity 1, it has to be coming on the other side. It has to be looking like this, horizontal asymptote 1. So it would have to look like this. It must be even function. There you go. Okay, we'll do some more of these next time. Bye-bye.